Yeah, hi everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi Rajiv. Hi. So, uh thanks a lot for everybody who has joined us so uh, today. So, I hope that you can see my screen. Yep. Yeah, yes. So, I uh, welcome all of you, especially our uh, panelists uh, as well as our our audience. So welcome everybody for our fourth episode of customer experience the new differentiator. So today so today I've got uh, some very interesting speakers with me uh one of the very high profile personalities within their own field. So possibly uh without much of the wait I will I'll request them to introduce themselves. So I'll possibly start with our our partner for this event uh Farzan he's a CEO and co-founder of carta.ai. So Rizan, can I can I request you to introduce yourself? Sure, thank you, Rajiv. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Irzan. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Kata.ai. Kata.ai is the leading and the largest conversational AI platform in Indonesia. We help businesses to grow either by cost reduction or creating a new avenue of growth of sales through the popular messaging applications such as WhatsApp, Line, Telegram, and so on by making machine understand human's natural language. Thank you, Rajiv. Thanks Azan for uh, giving your time today. Uh can I request Ibu Mila to introduce herself? She is the head of customer experience in CMI Binyaga. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Hi Rajiv. Uh my name is Mila, Mila Widiani. I'm the head of customer experience in CMI Binyaga. So right now in CMI Binyaga is um uh, we're focusing more and more towards our customers and um really uh, glad to be invited into this session. Thank you, Ibu Mila. So can I now request Pastor Sultan to introduce himself? Hi, Rajiv. Hi, everyone. My name is Sultan Isnainsa. I am the interim VP of Business Development at Indosat Urdu. My role at Indosat Urdu is leading the digital transformation in terms of customer experience. Thank you. Thank you. So thanks, everyone, uh, for the introduction. So before we get into the panel discussion just a very quick word to everybody in the in the audience in case you have got any question and answer please feel free free to give your Q&A in the in the drop box there so just just let us know in case you have any questions i will take those questions in between the webinar and let's make it more engaging more interactive just before we start the webinar just a quick introduction of who I am and what we do as a company I'm the founder of Servicesum we are a customer experience platform uh, as the name sounds that we have got a survey platform we help companies to measure and improve customer experience how do we do that we have got couple of products the first product is our survey platform it's real time it's omni channel so the way this platform works using our platform companies they can create service they can send service to omni channel which means service can be sent to whatsapp can be sent to sms can be sent to email uh, we have got a open api that keep companies can integrate our api to chatbots to crm as well as apps so the moment customer touches a brand or a service immediately a survey goes to a customer which is what we call as trigger based surveys the moment customer gives a feedback all of that can be seen real time on our dashboards you don't have to create any charts just to give you a very very quick demo without taking much of the time this is how the platform looks like you can build service in multiple languages you can add in questions you can send surveys or you can use our api to integrate across platform you can send surveys on email of customers you can integrate with social media uh, we also have our own panel you can create a qr code which you can put in their retail outlets you can send surveys on whatsapp you can send surveys on on sms so the moment customer gets a survey and here on the entire summary you can see how many surveys have been have gone to customers how many of them have replied how many of them have not replied the moment they give a reply without creating any charts all of those charts are created by by our platform itself you can look at the analysis real time so the moment customer gives you a feedback all of that can be looked at real time be it open ended be it closed ended questions if you ask open ended question question why they are happy why they are not happy you can see a word cloud live coming onto the platform if you want to download complete report you can just click at the right you can download the entire report 
into your CSV file. You can look at individual comments. We don't even stop there. What we also do is that we have created what we call as close the loop, which is a detract alert system. So the moment somebody says, I'm not happy with your service, an alert like this goes to your customer support team. So the moment somebody has opened a bank account or opened possibly or got a new card, and the moment survey goes to them, if there's something which is they're not happy with, immediately a detractor alert goes to the customer support team. So you know live who's happy, who's not happy. And the idea is that you can improve your customer experience by getting the feedback. And all of that is real time. So you don't have to wait for weeks and months anymore. So that's one of the products that we have. Our second product is what we call as conversation analytics. As Izzan mentioned, possibly is a buzzword right now. Everybody's talking about conversation analytics. As the conversations are moving more digital, uh, people are conversing on social media, they're conversing on call centers, they're conversing on, on chatbot app. They, there's also open-ended survey responses. So rather than you in reading those responses individually, what we do, we pull all of that unstructured data using our Bahasa-based NLP engine. We convert that into real-time summary for you. So you don't have to read one by one. All of that is done by the machine learning platform. So you, you can look at the entire feedback. You can, you can see the entire summaries of what the conversations are happening. You can look at that real time. You can see what sentiments are these conversations evoking. These conversations can be on chatbot. It can be on app. It can be on social media. So when we pull all of that data, you can see real time the sentiments of consumers, their intent, the summary of the entire conversation. So you don't have to read one by one. Platform immediately summarizes for you. It also gives you a live summary of what customers are talking about, which is completely auto-generated by our platform. That's called NLG, natural language generation. And if you want to understand within each topic what customers are talking about, you can go to subtopics. You can understand what customers are talking about. It doesn't stop there. Uh, it also generates a ticket. So every particular ticket is being tagged. Every particular conversation is tagged. So you know that this customer is not happy, sentiment is negative, intent is very high, and this is a topic that customers are talking about. That's what we call uh, the entire conversation analytics. You can in import the data manually, uh, or you can integrate this with your chatbot. You can filter the data by, by geographies, demographics, uh, if you want to upload the data manually, you can upload it manually. Or if you want to integrate this with your CRM systems, you want to integrate this with your chatbot systems, you want to integrate this with your, with your call center data, all of that is very much possible. So that's what the entire voice and text analytics or conversation analytics is all about. So having said that, let's quickly jump into the entire panel discussion. So today, as you can see, we have got uh, three topics uh, that to discuss. The first of that is, is what we call as the change in consumer behavior. So possibly here is where we will have a very detailed discussion about what are the changes which are happening in Indonesia in respective categories. I think this is where the entire panel discussion becomes very powerful. So possibly what I'll do is that I'll start with Ibu Mila to ask her so Ibu, you know, you have been in CMIV for some time. You have, you have, of course, you are Indonesian. You are seeing Indonesia consumer habits for a long time. Yes. So during this time, if I have to ask you, what are the changes that you are seeing in Indonesia from a consumer behavior perspective for banking sector? Okay. okay can I ask you to give your viewpoint? Okay. Thanks, Rajiv. So uh, what we see, um, of course, we see it from our um, our voice of customers. We, we monitor our uh, customer behavior and also the profile from time to time. And we see that there's a shift in customer behavior uh, towards the last three months. So uh, with the pandemics going on, we see that the customers are more into um, uh, spending conscious. Uh, there's a changing where they, um, they stop, uh, they stop, consumption on uh, for example like handphones or uh, not the basic necessities so the first uh, focus for our consumers is more focused on the basic necessities right now in terms of banking we see that the changes are um, 
from the conventional, uh, the way we do the banking towards more digital. So we saw that uh, the traffic is going to our digital platform a lot. There's an increase in transactions in our digital platform. So the customers are um, more, more and more um, uh, demanding of our digital uh, usage and also features right now. All right. Thanks yeah. a lot. Uh, so, so you mentioned that you're seeing a lot of more digital traffic. Does it right. mean that consumers are, are going more online to open their bank accounts? All right. Yes. Uh, right now, um, what we hear from our customer force are they're, um, they're, they're a bit uh, afraid of going out from house. So they want uh, their transactions uh, be done in uh, our digital platform. For example, opening a new account, time deposit, also transactions in e-commerce. So those are the features or functions that they uh, requires right now in high demand. Right. Thanks. Yeah. So I think coming to Pas Sultan. Uh, so Pas Sultan, of course, you know you are uh, in a category which possibly is very, very dynamic right now. Uh, telecommunication, uh, we know that data is booming. But in the last four months, did you see any change happening in the consumer behavior, Paul? The consumer behavior, uh, we have seen the changes since the very beginning of the year. So uh, a lot of people say that 2020 will be a digital age. So uh, we already seen that from the previous uh, years because we seen that uh, the trends that are going on in 2020 is that business will be going uh, hyper-local, which means uh, when you go to somewhere, to some place, you're looking for reference, whether it's in social media, whether it's in Google, whether it's in your uh, Google Maps. And also social media is become uh, one of the uh, key highlights, the, the preferred channel from the uh, customers who are going to interact with the brands, right? So whatever, they want to know about the brands, whatever they want to know about businesses, they first look into social media. So they're looking whether is it the sentiment about this brand is uh, negative, positive, whether is it something went viral or something uh, that performed that, that they think that this will be a promotional content that being relevant for them, right? And so with these two changes, with these two major changes, customer then expect the brand to listen. So uh, within the past uh, three months, or four months uh, during the pandemic, it's just more enhancing our uh, predictions where the customer goes more online than before, goes more digital than before. So this also, uh, you can see that our publication stated that uh, the traffic data has been increased uh, since uh, the beginning of May. And the behavior also changing. They, they, they're doing a lot of more on streaming, gaming and also uh, connecting with the social media. So with this kind of changes, I think uh, brand, especially for the telecommunication brands, should be more uh, proactive and should be more able to, to catch the trend. Right. Thanks, thanks, Pasultan. Parizan, you know, you, you, you're, you're running a company which possibly is one of the most dynamic companies. I think everybody's talking about chatbots in the region. So, so according to you, I mean, you work with so many enterprises in Indonesia. Uh, Isan, what are the changes that you are seeing in Indonesia that you did not possibly see in the past? Yeah, Rajiv. So I think if we take a look from the macro digital landscape that uh, we see the rise of this on-demand economy. We want to have a food, then it's just a tap. We want to ride, then just a tap. So it changes the customer consumer behavior we are getting becoming more impatient day by day and we want to get everything fast today, right now. The same thing, this relates to getting information that sometimes even in the middle of the night, anytime, anywhere, uh, through the uh, application that you're using every day, such as messaging or social media, you want to get information from the business that you are using, the, uh, whose, whose service you are subscribing or you're using. So I think this is the, the change that we are seeing, I think for the last 12 months. But if we take a closer look with the current pandemic situation, as mentioned by Pak Sultan, I think more and more customers see the opportunity of going online and how they can interact with businesses and getting things done. So if we see like e-commerce and grocery deliveries are spiking today, and then more and more brands, they see the opportunity of engaging better with their consumers on WhatsApp. 
because uh, they see they can build a one-on-one -on -one to one connection engagement with a consumer and the same thing with other platforms such as instagram just for example like whatsapp is actually the nation super app with 120 million users every month and it changes the whole landscape now everybody doesn't have to download new app and then through whatsapp they can even talk to a customer service, even talk to a bot to getting information. And also to note interesting fact that uh, with the social distancing, people spend more time digitally on the social media, on the mobile phone, especially with the rise of TikTok. So I'm quite interested to see in the next, uh, I think six to 12 months, how TikTok is gonna change the landscape of the consumer business, knowing that they just launched uh, their TikTok for business and how it will uh, be an implication to the consumer landscape in Indonesia. Thanks a lot. I think uh, that was a very, very interesting insights. Thanks for share, sharing your feedback. I think, of course, you know, we, we all know that consumers are moving digital. Uh, I think my next question will be, uh, if you can share some of the data, I'll possibly go back to Ibumila again. Of course, you know, people are moving digital. They are more online digital applications. But Ibu, did, did you see any drop, any change in your business pattern? Of course, you know, people are moving more online in terms of uh, getting opening their account. Did you see overall business getting impacted because of this particular pandemic? Okay, what we see, um, there's a shift, of course, uh, Raji, from our conventional channels such as branches, also from contact center into more digital one, in, into more digital channels such as um, we have emails and also we have social medias. So customer, um, uh, especially in the past three months, we see that there's an increase, 30% of increase, shifting uh, from our uh, voice interactions into the uh, digital. So that uh, we see that uh, customers are more uh, demanding for quick uh, responses from our agents and also from our staff. That's why they are uh, moving into the digital uh, uh, channels for the inquiries, complaints, and so on. So in terms of business-wise, we see that um, we still, uh, in, in terms of numbers, we still BAU. Um, in the past three months, we see the trends still, uh, still the same right now. But um, there is, a, of course, um, in meeting our consumer, consumer uh, demand, we have to uh, adjust our, the way we, we do the working. We do have to adjust the processes to make uh, the customer milk feel convenient and transacting in digital channels. Right. Yeah. I think, and you did mention to me before, uh, so you, your liability side still looks decent to you, isn't it? Yes. Which is the entire thing. Yeah. How about the other part of the business, like credit card? Uh, I think it's very difficult to validate a consumer when you are on digital rather than a face-to-face. -face. Right. Uh, so did you, did you see issues around that part of the business? Okay, uh, for our liability side, it seems uh, BAU it is okay. Uh, on in terms of the uh, asset side, uh, customer, uh, especially during this pandemic, uh, they're asking if there's any programs, Rajiv, in terms of um, for the credit cards, personal loans, and uh, mortgage. So um, for that reason, um, OJK has also issued a, a policy where banks are offering a relief program to the customers. That's what we're doing right now. We, we try to help uh, our customers for their uh, assets products. Right. I think, you yeah. know, you mentioned a very interesting point, Ibu Mila. I'll, I'll possibly continue with asking you some more questions before I go to the other panelists. Uh, I think I've also seen this in the previous webinar where people, they mentioned that Consumers who are used to calling over the over the phone, as in the hotline of the call center, mm -hmm. that possibly mm -hmm. went down, and consumers are getting more digitally literate. Yes, correct. Uh, and and do you see moving forward this pattern to be continuing? And do you possibly see that all this lot of these calls uh, and call center possibly will have a tough time in the future, and it possibly might move towards more towards a virtual assistant? Do you see that pattern emerging? I think. Uh... Yeah. Um, we see that this is an opportunity, Rajiv, uh, to educate our customers in using our digital platform. We see that the trend would be moving into that direction. Um, uh, it is said by uh, Pak Irzan and also uh, Pak Sultan, we are moving into uh, more and more digital trend. So I think this time, uh, this is the right moment to educate our customers into using our digital platform more. Because um, in the th past three months, we see uh, there's an increase in customers' inquiry on asking us on how to use our mobile platform 
or um, or internet platform. So uh, this, when we see that there's an opportunity, we educate our customer more into our, what we can do in our mobile platform and also into internet banking. They can do any transactions from that platform. We don't have to. We don't have to go into uh, um, outside the house. So uh, yeah, that's our focus right now. And then we are listening to our customers as well, Rajiv. So uh, we listening what features that we can develop further into our platform. Great. Yeah. So Pasal Tan, you know, coming to you, I'm sure. Uh, I, I'm I'm very much sure that the telecommunication business must be doing well during this time. People being at home, a uh, lot of more data being consumed. So what are the trends that you are seeing right now with this entire consumer behavior changing? What are the trends that you are seeing in your own business path? Okay, uh, what we see in the telecommunication uh, consumers' uh, behaviors right now is that uh, their behavior, as, as you say, it is more digital and more uh, reluctant to go out. They, they prefer if I can do everything on my phone, if I can do everything on my uh, laptop or on my screens, why do I have to go out? If I can do everything online, why I have to go to the store? So there's, there's that big changes that currently we are facing and we are also adapting with, with that, the trends and delivering uh, the touch point, the customer touch point that is currently being relevant to our customers. Thanks. So Izan, uh, coming to you, uh, Izan, uh, you know, I, I know that uh, possibly we have always discussed that Indonesia digital literacy is improving. But possibly still there's a lot of gap between say even Indonesia versus Singapore or US for that matter of fact from a, from a digital literacy or, or adaptation perspective. But in the last six months, Arizona, did you see any changes in your business? Uh, did you see uh, clients coming to you more for, for, for chatbot inquiries and, and how has the business been impacted for you? Yeah, I think looking at this current pandemic, it forces everyone to have the mindset that cash is king. Either they want to preserve cash or they need to collect cash, right? Because survivability in business is number one. So going back to your question, uh, Rajiv, we see a spike of 30 to 40% increase of usage uh, all across our chatbots from our customers across all industries. And then we see even like even 2 million people uh, were interacting with our chatbots uh, every month. So it says something that uh, as mentioned by Pak Sultan and Bumila, people are going reluctant to go outside they prefer to use any service that can uh, they, they feel at the palm of their hand but funny uh, interesting part is that every different industry has different impact after this pandemic uh, when we talk about the basic stuff where chatbot could play a role in this case for cost reduction or customer service because some business they have to preserve cash they need to be more efficient in their operation and they see a chatbot is the way to go in this case for customer service rather than keeping a large operation of contact center. That's one thing. The second thing that we see also consumer, they expect not only to raise complaints or asking about information, they want to buy something. They want to transact on their messaging applications. They want to make a commercial transaction on their um, social media or, or messaging applications. So this is the kind of like the, the new normal we're seeing uh, with this kind of pandemic. It opens up new opportunities that we haven't seen before. Uh, just for example, also in our banking customer, one of them, uh, we never ever seen before, we see the spike of getting information about the loan. Because again, people are trying to survive uh, with their personal life, with their business, and they try to find information uh, how they can, um, let's say, um, find a loan in order to, um, to finance their business. So I think this is kind of, this is kind of change of behavior uh, we are seeing in the last three to four months uh, due to the impact of this pandemic, Rajiv. Thanks, Arizan. I think, uh, you know, uh, uh, I believe the customer journey is really changing. People who, in, in our part of the world, where people are very much used to going to branches, going to galleries, raising issues face to face. Now suddenly it's, it's trying to move towards digital because people are afraid of going out. Now what I've been seeing, observing in other countries, I just want your point of view on that. I've been seeing that a lot of banks and a lot of telecommunication operators are trying to restructure the way the entire business has been done. Possibly looking at optimizing their branches, their galleries. Do you think that's, that's going to be the trend for the future for Indonesia? Where a lot of galleries and branches might be optimized. Uh, I think this is what I'm seeing in, 
in some other part of the world uh, i just want to get get your point of view what do you think will be possibly a future prediction on a customer totally journey? totally yeah totally rajiv i think if we take a look at the certain industries uh, with the uh, fellow panelists today with in banking and telecom uh, we see that those kind of industries they are trying to move more into digital that's why lately we heard a term about digital banking maybe we like can share more about it or digital telecom uh this kind of trends uh, start globally and i think it's happening already in, in indonesia and branchless will be the number one way to go i think in the next two or three years great Thank you. thanks so i think what i'll do is that you know, at this point of time i will just do let's let's try to engage audience a bit more uh so i just want to do a quick poll just to understand uh what our audience is is also seeing because a lot of people who have joined us are also from different different companies so i'm going to launch a quick poll uh, and of course our panelists can also vote so the poll is all about what changes are we observing in indonesia right now because of covid i hope you guys can see the poll so are you seeing more transactions on website app social media call center So in the meantime if any of you have any questions to our panelists feel free to raise questions I'll I'll be more than happy to take questions and ask them So I think in the meantime I've got very one very interesting question uh, just to ask uh, both of you uh, Mila as well as Sultan uh, have you seen the entire possibility to meet up I'll go first have you seen the entire digital banking penetration going up in Indonesia right now and what kind of numbers we are looking at right now yeah in terms of numbers um, this this increase definite increase uh, Rajiv um, in active users we see a, a, a positive increase uh, in our customer base as well as the new users especially in March uh, in in the month of March right thanks yeah. sultan uh, are you seeing any digital uh, telecom going up in indonesia what percentages are you looking at in terms of the increase yeah we see also in the telecommunication uh, consumers are preferred to uh, contact the telecommunication brands using digital channels we see exponential exponential growth in our digital channels uh, especially in the chatbot uh, thanks to kata.ai for providing the solutions and uh, also uh, the increase is from the mobile apps also because if they can do something in their phone why do they have to go to somewhere else so that will be the major driven that that impacting into the group in the telecom yeah thanks sultan so i'm just going to share uh, i'll just end the poll and share the results so i hope that you guys can see the results on the screen all of you so as you can see uh, what our audience is also telling us that there's more transaction happening on apps followed by social media then website and call center now which possibly raises a big question uh, what's the future of call center uh, i think of course we are not discussing that today but uh, as you can see consumers are definitely moving more digital social media seems to be a big channel including whatsapp uh, apps website as well as then followed by call center I'll just stop sharing the results and let's move to our next section, which is going to be very interesting. So I think next, of course, we know impact on business, what's happening uh, with consumer behavior. Let's talk about how businesses are adapting. So if you, if you will, possibly I'll start with you again. Uh, you know, I think you, you've been heading customer experience team for a long time. Now, given these changes which are happening in consumer behavior and business, how are you measuring your customer experience? How do you know if Rajiv is a customer of CMI Binyaga? How do I know that you're listening to me? Okay. Thanks, Rajiv. Um, so here in CMI Binyaga, we adopt what we call um, total voice of customers. So we measure uh, voice of customers 360. Uh, starting from the brand, we have that uh, net promoter score surveys. Then we listen what their preference uh, in uh, financial transactions and also in the brand. 
Uh, as well for our own customers, we have a measurement where we also doing a survey Rajiv to our customers from uh, uh, after they doing transactions or after they uh, going to the branch and so on. So um, throughout their customer journey, we we um, monitor what our customers are performing. So we we also get feedback from them in order for us to keep improving in our processes. As well as um, customer complaints is also important for us in order to win back our customers. So um, for uh, total voice of customer, I think we already have a, a complete uh, set of customer voices. Um, besides that, for customer external customers, we also uh, monitor our internal customers, Rajiv, in order to deliver a good customer experience for our outside customers. We need to have uh, our employee heard in order to make them happy, so that they can do uh, they can provide good services for our external customers. That's what we do right now. Thanks, Mila. So I think just yeah. to follow up on that question, Mila, uh, I've got a couple of questions to ask you on this. So. The first question is, are you measuring this NPS across customer journey? Or have you mapped your customer journey and you're measuring this NPS score across journey? Yeah. And, okay. And how are you uh, measuring it? Yes. For our NPS, uh, we, we have a, a variety of uh, customers based in our uh, portfolio. For example, our credit cards, our um, uh, assets, and also our mortgage also from SME and uh, corporate. So those are customers that we include in our surveys, Rajiv, in every year and also in every transaction they do. We want to uh, hear their voices when they do transactions, especially the key uh, processes after they uh, meet their RMs or after they going to the branches. What, um, what feedback do they uh, have, uh, have towards us? Can I ask yeah. you to share any insights? Because I think nowadays I, I do see the entire real-time survey or market research or insights becoming very powerful. People call that as data as a new oil. So uh, can, can, I, can I ask you to share any insights that you got from your survey which, which helped you in the past to improve your customer experience? Yeah, uh, one of the most important insights that we have is right now, uh, because banking is... Uh, still, our customer base still uh, still needs that human touch in the services. So people aspect still come uh, often in our surveys and our insight. So people they they're asking uh, their their expectation towards our staff is uh, partner for them, a the, uh, partner who can provide solutions and also giving them service uh, according to their needs. That's uh, come up. Um, very often in our surveys. Aside from that is uh, speed of uh, transaction processes and also um, the products. They still need variety of products to meet their needs. Thank you. So, Pat Sultan, uh, coming to you, uh, how are you or how is Indosat listening to the, to the customer? For, for example, if I'm a customer again of Indosat, how do, do I know that my voice has been listened? and yeah, what, yeah. what programs that you have put in place? Yeah, currently uh, at our uh, customer experience center, we have implemented the, the omni-channel uh, uh, console. So the agent and the supervisors and all the stakeholders can monitor what's going on in the digital uh, universe, right? So for example, if, if somebody uh, mentioning about uh, Indosat, even without mentioning the account, we can understand what are they talking about. And we can also understand uh, where are the trends going about their conversation, whether they're talking about the negative sentiment, whether they're talking about the positive sentiment. And then among of that social media noises, we gather all the keywords, we gather all the insight that is relevant to our products, relevant to our next innovations, and relevant to our customer behaviors. So we gather these insights and then we treat it as uh, inputs so we can do better and provide better services to our customers. Thanks. So uh, Sultan, is it possible for you to take, take one or two examples of how, what insights you got from your omnichannel platforms, mm -hmm. be it survey platform or conversation analytics and how did, you, did it help you to improve your customer experience? 
Yeah, for example, if you are mentioning about, uh, if you're tweeting something, something like this, is there anything I can do with YouTube because I'm using Indosat, right? So meaning there are intents that we can query from that uh, phrases. We can query that the customers, uh, our behaviors are changing to a more uh, video streaming behaviors. And we also uh, identifying that they are looking the best packages that are suited, uh, suitable for their needs. So these two kind of keywords, we then, uh, how do, we, how do you say it? We harvest it from our platform and then we gather the, the, the relevant queries and the relevant hashtags. So then we can talk to our products uh, or the marketing team and how to deliver the best solution for them. Thanks, Sultan. Uh, very interesting. So Rizan, I think uh, coming to you, uh, of course, you know, chatbot nowadays is not about only a chatbot, right? It's not about a chatting mm -hmm. tool. So at the end of the day, it's about improving customer experience. So can you just give me examples of how people are using chatbots to improve customer experience? What kind of insights are they drawing? If you, if you can take any example from any category that, you know, this was a particular insight somebody drew that which helped them to improve their customer experience. Sure, Rajiv. So I think people are hyping about chatbots, AI, but what I can tell is that with the current state of the art of technology, um, AI could achieve that way, but in order to really solve the customer experience, to deliver a top-notch experience to the consumer, there should be a human in the loop. So that's why when we talk about customer service engagement, or whoever our clients are, whatever industry they are, we always connect uh, our chatbots here with some CRMs that allowing human agents to jump in anytime to ensuring there's a smooth customer experience delivering to the customers. So if there's any issues, any pitfalls, then human can take over. But uh, the key, I think the common fallacy and pitfalls, how I see enterprise in uh, adopting chatbot, they view it as a project. But as we know that in order to build a product that uh, is sustainable and relevant over time, we have to treat it just like a product, just like a website or an app, because every day there's always new kind of language or slangs. Uh, every month, your company has new offerings, new products. That way, like data training has to be done consistently. And that's what Kata team is doing and providing services to our customers. Either we have our delivery team helping our customers to do so with our customer success team, or we work together with our partners that can enable our customers to do so. So in a sense, the process and the cycle that has needs to be happening. And over time, we can see like how many fallbacks Callbacks meaning every time the chatbot says, I don't know the answer, or it's uh, passed over to human yeah. agent, it should be reduced over time. So I think that's what we do so far uh, on top of enabling the communication on top of multiple channels from WhatsApp, Telegram, Facebook Messenger, Line, even the web apps or even mobile app. Like, you know, Rizan, you mentioned about fallback. I remember, you know, when I discussed about chatbot and implementation with many clients in Indonesia or in the region, one of the big issues that they always face about is the fallback. So can you just mm -hmm. give some example that how have you trained your algorithm better or the industry in a way to reduce the fallback and how much is, is a reduction on the fallback right now? Yeah, in, in this case, the way, the way, the way I say that um, AI means nothing without data. So data sets is really, really important. So every time we um, uh, talk to a client and onboard a client, the first thing we do is uh, if they already have an, a CRM, whether it is like Zendesk, Salesforce or any others, we would require the data to be trained to our um, algorithm, to our model first. And along the way, I think this is something, a process that needs to be done, I think, uh, iteratively and consistently. So nothing uh, at this point, if we talk about uh, business chatbots or enterprise chatbots, so human in the loop, in this case, the ones who train is very, very important because if we try to force the way we call it unsupervised learning, the technology is not there yet, and what we need to focus on is really delivering a top-notch customer experience. So there's nothing other than really train it over time, uh, gathering data from as much as digital touch point as you can, and then uh, ensuring you can measure with uh, CSAT or NPS and the feedback of the customers uh, qualitatively as well. Brilliant, Rizan, thanks. You know, I've got some very, very interesting questions. So I think possibly it's time for me to stop my questions because I think the questions that I've got are possibly more interesting than what I have with me. So uh, 
Uh, I'll just kind of go back in the loop again, ask all of you. I'll possibly start with the Bumila. Uh, you mentioned that you measure NPS. Uh, I think the first question is, when you measure the transaction NP NPS, I don't know, after every transaction the NPS is captured, how do you follow up with the customer? For example, if I give a bad score for whatever reason, how do you follow up with me as, as a customer? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Rajiv. Uh, for the follow-up, we have a feedback loop process, Rajiv. So we monitor the result after the survey. We see uh, if customer giving us a, a not so good feedback, something that we need to working on. Uh, we liaise with the department related on how we can reach back to the customers, uh, possibly asking them uh, what can we improve further uh, qualitatively and then uh, from there, we can uh, do some action planning with, with the product team. So what we, that, uh, we do that continuously, Rajiv. So we monitor our actions um, based on the score that we receive every month. If our actions is not um, tackling the problems, I think we need to review the processes again. So um, that's the feedback loop that uh, we have in place. Great. So I think it's good that you have this the entire closing the loop, uh, which many, many organizations yes. they don't have. I think that's another buzzword that people talk about. So if you will just continuing on that, uh, you know, when you when you measure NPS, of course, NPS is a, is a net promoter score. Do you relate it back to your sales or revenue increase? For example, if your NPS score is low and you know every customer, which customer is giving you a bad score or which company, <laughs> customer is a passive, which company is, customer is a detractor, how do you relate it back to your revenue or are you relating it back to the revenue increase? Yeah, we tied up the uh, NPS score result into the customer behavior and profile, Rajiv. So we identify who our customers giving our uh, low score and who are giving us a high score. So we identify them. Uh, we, uh, we do some analysis on what can we do in improving our NPS score in terms of customer profile, what products we can offer to them, what services, personal services that we can offer uh, to our customers. And also um, in terms of revenue generations, we see if there's correlation between a uh, low score and uh, the churning uh, rate, or if there's any increase in transactions in a banking or product ownership, if after they giving us a good NPS score, that's what we do continuously on analysis, Rajiv. Thanks, thanks Ibu Mila. Uh, very great insights. I'm sure that you know, everybody who's listening to you would have been really inspired to, to possibly do more modeling and relate NPS back to the revenue. I think if you can do that, of course, CEOs of the company are happy, that customers are happy in giving, giving more money. I think that's what every CEO wants at the end of the day. Uh, Sultan, you know, coming to you, a very interesting question for you. I mean, you mentioned that you do this omni-channel listening and you take omni-channel feedback. But when it comes to the action planning, you know, of course, feedback is important, but putting that into action is very, very important. In your organization, do you have these monthly meetings or weekly meetings across teams? where you have yeah. a customer service team, a product team, uh, I don't know whether an HR team or a marketing team. Do you do you gather together on a weekly or monthly basis to share this feedback? And how sure. do you take action on it? Yeah, sure. Because uh, currently, uh, one of the trends in the enterprise uh, industry and in, in, the, in the enterprise companies is that uh, we are also adapting with a new uh, trend in the weekly and daily basis right now. And some of the companies, including uh, including Indosat, already implementing the sprint planning or the Scrum methodology, right? So when we get any insight, where does it come from? Surfy, where does it come from? Uh, CSAT, where does it come from? The uh, social media, uh, social listening, we gather those insights and then we 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 drill down one by one and then we decide which one that really really relevant to our customer, and then we also validate those insights, whether this insights is also happens to a certain group of people or is this impacting to the group of people that are impacting to our revenue. So if the insight is valid, we do a testing to the market, we do a GTM process, and then we see whether the, our solution that we provided is uh, making them have a better experience or better solutions. That's how we measure the experience right now because we cannot just take a survey and, and then decide like, or CSAT is good. And then we don't see 
what are they typing in this comments? What are they, what are they dissatisfaction factors are? So we also has to validate those insights to a real customer into a real market. So we can understand whether our solution is relevant or not to our customers. Customer. Right. I think just, just a follow up question on that. You know, I understand that you take the feedback, you design a plan and you go have a GTM or go, go, go to market strategy. But how do you measure whether this particular action has been giving you a positive result? What are the metrics around it that you're measuring, Pal Sultan? When you, when you go to, is it, is it an incremental sales? Or is it an incremental NPS score or incremental CSAT score? How do you measure that? We measure all of those things actually. We measure is there any impact on the, <laughs> on the sales? We measure whether is it impact on the satisfaction or the promoter scores. So we measure all of those uh, variables and then we can see uh, if we come out with one solution, there might be a result where the satisfaction score is high, but the revenue is not so much, right? And there's also a product that we come uh, the, where the revenue is also high, but the satisfaction is not there. So this is where I think we can tweak up and, and find the best uh, solution to customer because we cannot just uh, publish or produce uh, one solution and then leave it as it is. We have to review it and we have to understand what the customer are talking, what the customer experience. We have to experience our own product itself. And we have to see what are, because currently, as I said, uh, the behavior right now, everybody is talking in social media. So we also see what are the trends when we launch a product in social media. So this way, we can understand what are the customer voice are talking about. Great. Okay, I think another very interesting question. Uh, you know, of course, consumers can give you feedback through surveys on social media, even on chatbot. But then how, how do you prioritize? You know, I mean, I as a customer, can you give you 20 different things I want? Isn't it? You know, because uh, consumers, they want more at a cheaper price, right? That's where the world is moving. But then how do you prioritize? So you can be like, you know, if I give you 20 feedbacks on my survey or even on uh, speech analytics, that, the one that you're doing, how do you prioritize it? Which of the actions that you have to take? Okay. Uh, there are a few parameters that we use, uh, Rajiv, in order to prioritize action planning. For example, if that, if that uh, insights coming up regularly in our surveys, complaints, or any other uh, uh, listening tools, it means uh, something that customers really want from us, uh, expecting from us. And then uh, we see if there's... Um, if there's correlation or if there's um, uh, correlation between that insight uh, with our revenue generations, that would be a priority task for us. Other than that, we see that there's parameters also where, um, where we focus on some other groups that we uh, were our business. If the insights are coming up from that group, we need to take a look and um, prioritize their actions for them in order to increase the uh, survey result or improvements. Thank you. So I think let's go to our next poll. Let's try to engage audience a bit more. And I think, of course, uh, uh, I think all of you panelists can also vote. So I think here what we are trying to understand, I hope that you guys can see the poll. So we, we, we are trying to understand what changes did the organization they implemented in their CX program during COVID. So during this last four or five months, what what CX programs that people have implemented in the last four or five months? Yeah, so I think uh, while we are, we are waiting for the results, uh, so I think I, I possibly can take one more question uh, while we're waiting for these results. So Ibu Mila, I think going back to you, uh, you mentioned that you guys are doing speech analytics. I think you mentioned in one of the conversation. Uh, which, which is a part of conversation analytics, but was it helpful for you? Did that yes. start conversation that I have on the call center and what kind of insights did you draw out of that? Okay, um, we have our speech, uh, uh, speech analytics technology in our contact center, Rajiv. So that speech analytic technology helping us to monitor our agents, whether they're providing a consistent service to our customers. 
and then uh, from there we all we're also listening whereby um, we can do specific uh, coaching and targeting for our uh, agents. For example, if we see that there's a long talk time in, uh, in the fields about something uh, on, on one topic, we can do a targeted or uh, thematic uh, training on that subject. So uh, we monitor that, uh, we monitor uh, the speech analytics for our um, development of age, agents development. And then uh, we can we monitor that um, on regular basis to see if there are any spike in customer complaints that we need to take uh, take action on. Rajiv, for example, there's a, uh, there's an incident where uh, whereby the connection with our third party, for example, our telecom third party, um, there's a issue there. We can monitor from our speech analytics and we can do the improvement right away. Fantastic. So let me share, end the poll and share the results with all of you. So I hope that you can see the results on the screen. So what companies have done uh, in the last six months, uh, I think a lot of people have implemented CX program, which is, which is a great news for the entire industry. I think uh, CX is becoming the buzzword. I do see a lot of implementation of uh, NPS score, which is not traditionally once a year, but it's almost real time. The moment transaction happens, the moment immediately survey goes and the feedback comes in. I think uh, social listening is happening. Chatbot listening has started. Uh, I think what you mentioned, uh, Ibu Mila, speech analytics still has a long way to go in Indonesia. Voice analytics still relatively weak. Possibly that's the trend moving forward, I am assuming. But definitely implementation of the real-time feedback has become more and more important. So let's go to our third and the last session for the day which is, of course, you know, all of us are talking about what's the new normal. So, Sultan, for, for you in Indosat, what do you think is a new normal for your for your business? I think I'm, I'm asking you to make a forecast, right? right. Uh, what do you think right. is the telecommunication industry is heading? Right, right. So, so in order to predict the future or to forecast what is the trends that we are going to face in the upcoming years, first of all, we have to review what happens this year and what happens the year before, right? So I remember uh, three years ago uh, when, when my first years uh, working at Indostat, I go to, to some places to buy a food and people are, are lining up. There are a long queue. Uh, do you know the long queue is happening because of, of uh, the inability to pay for cash? So people are going uh, there, they bring their cash in their wallets, but the merchant selling the food, selling the products using uh, electronic payment like GoPay or Obo or something. At that time, GoPay is still new, right? So people are hassled. They, they feel like this is a new thing for me. I don't want this because uh, I'm still having my cash. So they have to download and even the download is not successful, something like that, right? Now this year, even last year, I go to a food festival in Jakarta, and then there's another uh, queuing lining up. And the lining up is not about the cash anymore. It's about the electronic payment. It's about the go pay. So there's this food hall, food one food stall, that are opening their food and they allowing people to pay for cash. But do you know what behavior are now changing? People are no longer being, uh, bringing cash with them. They're bringing OVO, they're bringing GoPay, they're bringing their mobile wallet, they're bringing Dana and stuff, right? So the, the, the queuing is happening because they're trying to convert their virtual money into a cash. So this is, I think, one of the behavior that, that, that shift the entire industry. Because during the COVID itself, we see these years, uh, I try last week to go to a restaurant and you know what happens? What happens is that the waiter came to me, scanned me with the thermogun, and then he gave me the menu using a QR code. So it's touchless, right? So I pay with my electronic money. So it's cashless, right? So in terms of the industrial changes, we see that there are three behavior that we have to face in the, in the futures. One is that we have to be ready for any touchless experience. Second, we have to be ready with any cashless experience. And the third one is 
we have to be ready to, to give our customer a way out that they can do a self-service. If they can do it by themselves, they don't need a cashier. If they can do it by themselves, they don't need to go to store. If they can do it for themselves, they don't need to, to call a call center just for asking one, two, three simple questions, right? So I think that's uh, the trends that, that, that we need to forecast together for any kind of industry, ultimately for the telecommunication industry. Uh, I think very brilliant to summarize, Sultan. I think uh, absolutely on the dot. You know, while you were talking about this, I was relating to myself as a consumer. Uh, I don't think I've touched cash in the last five months of my life. I think so either, you know, there's an e-wallet on my phone. I, I totally relate to it. Uh, whenever I'm going to the restaurant in Singapore, it's absolutely the same thing. So, you know, Izan, coming back to you, uh, what are the forecasts that you, you see generally for Indonesia? Do you see digital literacy improving? And what are the forecasts you see for your own business, Izan? Yeah, thanks, Rajiv. I think definitely the digital literacy is, uh, is improving. Thanks to uh, the big platforms and the big businesses who keep introducing a more seamless user experience to their app and uh, introducing even simpler service through WhatsApp. So the way I see it, uh, in our case, uh, we have started this business, I think enabling uh, customer service, uh, how we can tackle the menial and mundane tasks in contact center um, business, so to speak, for our customers. But what we see here is how we can complete the journey, not only tackling the repetitive questions, but also how we can uh, close the loop by enabling transactions. Because uh, I believe when we see happy customers, uh, good NPS scores, good CSAT, it will translate to happiness, uh, which means they are willing to invest more in the brands and services. So I think the future, uh, what we are seeing is how we can enable social commerce at scale through the popular messaging applications. Great. So, Ibumila, the same goes for you. Uh, my question is the same, but of course, you know, from a banking industry perspective, what are the new trends that you, you forecast coming for your own sector? Okay. The forecast is still the same, um, Rajiv. Uh, transaction through digital channels, um, more services, fast services, bit services, and also more uh, human interactions in terms of our uh, preferred segments. Um, more empathetic services to our customers during these times. And um, yeah, still on digital. Right, great. So I think, yeah. uh, you know, I've got a very interesting question, which is about, again about digital. Uh, see, I have been in Indonesia. I mean, I was there for 15 years of my life and I have almost grown as a country has progressed. And Indonesia still is very much a traditional face-to-face -face research, right, when it comes to surveys. So there's a very interesting question. As the world progresses towards digital, and I know that you guys are doing digital surveys, right? you mentioned that you're doing an omni-channel digital surveys. So did you have that fear moving away from a face-to-face -face survey to a digital survey? Because a lot of people have that fear, that the fear of unknown. I don't know whether the digital audience is reliable. I don't know how to use it. I don't know how to implement it. Did you have that fear when you implemented digital surveys? And how did you overcome that fear, Ibu Mila? Okay. Um, in terms of survey, we currently do uh, both channels, Rajiv, conventional and also digital. We're still comparing uh, the effectiveness to reach our customers to, to those two channels. So um, in terms of the convention cha uh, channels, conventional channels, we see that um, the success rate is getting lower, whereby a customer is less uh, viewing the SMS or even um, WhatsApp. Now um, we are exploring integration to our uh, mobile bank. We explore whether we can do the surface, uh, survey after they do transactions in digital banking right away. Right, I think I, I totally agree with you. I think in, even when we are working with the clients, I feel a very similar way. Uh, In-app integration, for example, when you transact on the app, immediately a survey comes up, that has the best response rate. So that response is far higher than followed by WhatsApp, SMS, and email service possibly comes at the last nowadays. All right. So I think uh, what I'll do is that I will, I'll go to the next uh, question, which is uh, what are the plans that you guys have to improve your customer experience? Pa Sultan, you know, you mentioned about those three beautiful things about uh, 
you know, touchless, cashless. But when it comes to improving customer experience, if I'm your customer, how do you, do you plan to improve my customer experience? What are the plans that you have in place for the future? Right, right. So right I right. think uh, to answer this is also to answer uh, the pain point not only on the customer's end, but also in the enterprise uh, level's end as a company. Because uh, as we uh, also together see that today, even in this forum, a lot of companies have done many digital transformation initiatives. But what we or what the customer uh, often didn't know or didn't notice is that these digital initiatives are currently scattered, right? So one built the chatbot, another built the apps, another built uh, something else in the website, another, another built something else in the social media. So I think uh, one of the relevant uh, plan that has to be uh, prepared, not only for telecom industry, but also for any uh, relevant enterprise companies to, to face the 2021 challenges is that we have to build the integrated digital planning. As Irzan says that uh, the next year we'll be closing the loop. Maybe it means that enabling the digital easiness, like Mark Zuckerberg says that payment should be as easy as capturing a picture, a capturing a photo. We don't have that right now. So I think to simplify the customer experience and to, to deliver a better customer journey, we have to integrate each of our digital channels and provide one seamless integrated customer journey. Great, which, are, which means a lot of your, I'm sure that you, know, you might be using a lot of platforms or system within the company, which means all of those platforms have to come under one, one unified platform, isn't it? I mean, to make it entirely seamless. Uh... Absolutely, absolutely. Right, so Rizan, you know, coming to you Rizan on this question, uh, what do you think your client will be seeking, you know, for, to improve their customer experience? Yeah. Uh, okay. Good question, Rajiv. So the way I see it, um, the level of maturity of the conversational AI or chatbot technology is still day one. It's very, very nascent. But in, in the future, I think what will make it different is personalization at scale. So imagine when I talk the first time, the second time, it will be different depending on the, my customer journey and my, my activity with that brand. That being said, uh, integrating from one data point by looking at the past historical conversation won't be enough, but also conversations from multiple channels, including my activities. So if we, if we use the apps today, such as Spotify, Netflix, what I get on my Spotify and Netflix will be different what uh, you receive, right, Rajiv? Because it's personalized at our taste. I think that's the future of uh, chatbots here. Uh, if uh, an AI assistant could deliver a personalized experience by knowing you, delivering the right message, the right context, and being relevant. I think that's the scale that we're looking in the future in how we can improve our customer experience. That being said, uh, integrating 360 customer data sets will be very important in delivering uh, personalization and top-notch customer experience. Yeah, uh, I think very good point of view from, from you, Rizan. Uh, I believe the future of everything is personalization, right? Whether it's a personalization, personalized experience, personalized marketing. I think that's possibly is a way forward. So, Ibu Mila, I've got a very interesting question that I want to ask you, and it's directed towards banking. So, somebody wants to know how do you how do you survey a customer? So, for example, if I'm a customer, if I am calling your contact center, which is the effective way of asking a feedback? Is it an IVR integration? Is it a WhatsApp survey? Or is it an in-app survey? So, if I'm a customer, I'm calling a contact center. Is IVR a better way of, in, of taking my feedback or is WhatsApp survey or SMS survey is a better way of taking your feedback? Okay. okay. Yes, Rajiv. So um, there are two objectives that we want to um, measure here, right? Uh, for example, one is uh, our customer satisfaction towards the services provided by the um, agents that receive the calls. In that, re in that, um, in that area, we can do an IVR survey so the, the experience is fresh. The, the customers still uh, have that uh, experience in their mind and they can voice out that experience in the survey right away. But um, of course, there are some um, limitation towards that, um, toward that um, mechanism whereby we want to know more what, what is making them um, unsatisfied or satisfied, what areas we can improve more. 
we can do a further survey towards SMS or WhatsApp or even uh, other channels that we can leverage on. In that channel, in that um, surveys, we can ask more to our customers. So for example, what can we improve from that um, handling time or what solutions uh, customer are asking for, whether we have delivered that solution to customers. So for a deep stick, for a instant feedback, we can use that IVR. But for more thorough, um, thorough insights, we can use another channel to, to reach our customers. Thanks, I think brilliant answer. So I hope that the, the people in the, whoever has asked that question has got the perspective. I think uh, very well put, Bumila. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm going to go to the next poll, which is our last poll of the day. So I think uh, this is a poll that I want uh, possibly everybody to, to look at and possibly look at answering it. What, what are the following programs that you want to implement in your future CX program? So what are things that people are looking at implementing in the future? So if you like, there's a question on, on this, uh, I think which can go both for uh, telecommunication as well as banking. So somebody wants to know is WhatsApp, does WhatsApp survey has any limitation for banking and telecommunication category? So in a banking department, can we use WhatsApp for the survey or are you able to use it? And the same goes for Pa Sultan. Uh, in, in a telecommunication, can we use WhatsApp as a mechanism for survey? That's something somebody some wants to ask. I think that, that there's a question, very interesting question that I could pick. Okay. Uh, that's uh, interesting questions. I think um, WhatsApp can be used for as our channel for surveys, Rajiv. Um, uh, it's back to the uh, methodology that we want to tap in, Rajiv. So WhatsApp also has um, challenges in a delivery. For example, they have a maximum uh, number of WhatsApp messages that they can send out. So if you have a surface that not requires a lot of um, respondents to respond, you can use WhatsApp. It's more, uh, the effectiveness rate is higher than SMS because people are responding more to WhatsApp. Right. Pastor yeah. do you have any experience of doing a WhatsApp survey? Uh, not yet, but uh, okay. we are considering it. We are considering it because uh, currently uh, WhatsApp has become uh, one of the biggest uh, chat application in Indonesia. Yeah, so I think everybody agrees on that. And however, uh, in terms of uh, services uh, survey, we are going to measure our expectation, right? We are going to measure whether customer are satisfied with our product and services. So I think this is uh, one of the examples that, 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 that experienced by Indosat as well. So previously, our survey methodology is sending using uh, calls and SMS, and we are uh, having a very, very low response rate on that. But then we study that the new behavior, the customer, are now more digital and they are more active in the social media and the live chat. When then we shift the survey methodology to the channels where the customer are interacting with us, whether is it in social media, whether is it in email, and whether is it in live chat. So by only shifting those uh, channels or surveys to a more relevant channels, the response rate become higher than ever. So if if we want to change from our existing channel to WhatsApp, we have to firstly uh, firm whether WhatsApp is already being an interacting channel for us. If WhatsApp is not the interacting channel between the brand and the customer, I think the experience that the customer is having are not relevant to be uh, questions by the survey. So for example, if I try some services in social media or in uh, YouTube, for example, and then I get a WhatsApp asking the, the experience of the satisfaction of the product, I think it will break the, the customer experience because it's not the channels, it's not the, 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 the medium where I was interacting to. So I think in terms of survey, we have to see it uh, on the end-to-end -end customer journey itself. Right. Thanks, Thanks Pastor Tan. Uh, so I'll just show the results of the poll. So since... Uh, the, if I look at the scores, I think the, all the scores have gone up. So this was the same question I asked what people are doing now. And this is a question, the same question I asked what people want to do in the future. 
So it seems it scores across the board of getting more survey responses, real-time feedback, text sentiment analysis on chatbot, you know, which, which possibly is on calls also as conversation analytics. Voice analysis, I think all of those scores have gone up. So possibly, I'm assuming that this is going to continue for long in Indonesia, where customer experience, measuring customer experience will become more and more powerful. So that almost comes to the end of the session. So uh, just to share some of the summary that we have discussed, some very interesting slides that I also showed in the past. So people who have implemented CX program versus those who did not implement, this is data for what we got from Bain. So people who implemented CX program, their stock value in the last 20 years have gone up to 2x, which means there's a, there's, a, there's a reason people are implementing customer experience programs. Of course, the churn has gone up because the more you understand your customers, the more you can reduce the churn and the more you can reduce the cost of servicing because cost of acquisition is almost six times the cost of retention. So there's a benefit of implementing customer experience. And when people, they implement programs like a chatbot or a survey platform or conversation analytics, companies which have implemented this, they've seen an increase in NPS scores and they've also seen a decrease in the resolution time, which means program like, like evaluating the entire customer experience, be it conversation listening, using chatbots to make the entire conversation more engaging has helped companies to improve their customer experience. So that comes to almost, I've got a couple of more questions. Possibly I'll take a couple of more minutes. The question here is, uh, Sultan, this is possibly directed towards you. In telco category, are you relating NPS back to, to increase in ARPU? So if I'm managing NPS, are you, are you relating it back to the, the increment in revenue or average, average revenue per user? Absolutely, yes, Absolutely. because we wanted to see whether the increase of our subscribers are, are impacting to, to the increase of our satisfaction rate, right? So, so because previously we have an insight where the customers only buy the, the, the Indosat numbers only for the promotional packages. And then when the promotional packages is off, they threw up the, the SIM cards, right? So, so we don't want that experience to be repetitively happens, right? So that's why uh, when we are doing a survey, we are really, really look at into what are the relevant insights that the customer has spoken about us. So I think there is a loop, there is a data that, that we can uh, deep dive so we can improve a better uh, product uh, delivery and packages delivery to be uh, solutions providers to our customers. Thanks. So Rizan, I'm, I'm about to ask you my last question of the day. How do you balance a chatbot with the empathy? You know, I mean, there's always the question that if I implement mm -hmm. AI, I will lose the human touch. I lose that empathy uh, because, of course, chatbot is a chatbot. Uh, end of the day, it can't it can't analyze everything. But the, how do you balance both of them? Yeah. So as I mentioned, uh, Rajiv, the first one is always put human in the loop. So whatever the case, when customer is stuck, you give them a way out, as Bumila has mentioned too. In this case, having a customer service agent sitting behind the desk will be very, very helpful. The second thing is how we can uh, integrate with sentiment analysis because that will determine like how happy the customers is, how frustrated they are, and then it can be programmatically um, triggered what kind of action should be done next. For example, if the customers are super frustrated, they are very angry, then instead of uh, having the chatbot respond uh, the next section, then it will be passed over directly to the customer service agents. So I think that's kind of thing that uh, businesses have to consider when they are interested in implementing chatbot and integrating with real-time feedback in delivering uh, excellent customer experience. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thanks a lot. So just, just to close this session, uh, we have got two upcoming webinars. Uh, as you all know that we have, done, we have got two brands, uh, Neurosensor, which is a consulting, market research consulting, and we've got Service Sensor, which is a customer experience survey platform. So we've got a webinar coming up, which is about millennials, uh, changes that happening in millennials in Indonesia, and how do you crack the code? And on 4th August, we have our fifth episode of customer experience, where we'll have uh, insurance, FWD Insurance and the BNI Bank, where we will again discuss about customer experience and how what are they doing to improve their customer experience. 
With that, I want to end our session for today. Uh, I hope that all of us have learned a lot. Uh, I, I personally learned a lot in the last two weeks, interacting with Ibu Mila, interacting with Pa Sultan, of course, my dear friend Irzan. So I, I can't thank you enough uh, to have, I mean, having you for our webinar is, is been a pleasure, learning from you, interacting with you over the last two weeks. Thanks a lot, everyone. And thanks a lot for everyone who has attended our webinar today. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you, Thank you Bumila. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye.